Hello everyone. Over the past two decades, it has been absolutely remarkable to watch the growth of mobile money from a small niche service to one that reaches 1.6 billion people today. Now this growth is even more incredible when you realize that it took 17 years to reach the first 800 million customers and then only five years to reach the next 800 million. So uh, thank you so much for joining us to celebrate the launch of the annual GSMA State of the Industry Report on mobile money. Now the report shows just what a vital service mobile money has become for billions of people around the world. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, it became even more important. Now we know this because almost 400 million new mobile money accounts were added during this time. Many of them accessing digital financial services for the very first time. This year's State of the Industry report clearly shows this growth. And what we can also see is that the habits of using digital payments have stuck. And so mobile money activity growth is outperforming new registrations in many countries. This is hugely encouraging as we work to drive financial inclusion around the world. Now, one of the key contributors to all of this growth is regulatory changes in large markets. Take Nigeria, for example. Here we have seen new licenses granted, which means more mobile money players. And as a result, the number of registered agents has grown by over 40 percent. Absolutely incredible. Not only has this created employment for millions of new agents, but also that the service is now accessible to more people in the largest economy in Africa. Now, this is the beauty of the mobile money ecosystem at play. Around the world, mobile money is disrupting traditional financial services, driving financial inclusion for millions of people, creating employment opportunities, not just for agents, but through the small business opportunities it opens up for those with access to finance and savings. Last year, mobile money transactions reached $1 trillion globally. And this has continued to grow. Now, I cannot wait to see the incredible opportunities that it will continue to unlock. Now, with that, let's take a look at the short video with some of the key findings from this year's report. Mobile money has experienced staggering growth over the past two decades, cementing itself as a mainstream financial service. Today, it continues the trend by diversifying services, entering new markets and forging new industry partnerships. It took 17 years for the industry to register its first 800 million customers, and just five years to double that, spurred on in part by the COVID-19 pandemic. And now, for the first time, as the pandemic has eased, we have quantified its impact on the mobile money industry. There are now an estimated 400 million additional registered mobile money accounts than forecast in 2019. COVID-19 was the major driver behind this growth. As the effects of the pandemic have eased, the growth in mobile money has remained impressive. With registered accounts reaching 1.6 billion and transaction value reaching 1.26 trillion, customers now have access to more advanced solutions and a wider range of products and services than ever before. These innovative mobile money services help millions of people pay their bills, send money abroad, increase their income, manage their savings and access social support. As more cash is digitized and more governments support growth through enabling regulations, mobile money can offer safer, more accessible financial services to even more people around the world. The industry is driving financial inclusion, building economies and even helping to close the gender gap. Mobile money continues to transform our world, helping to power digital finance for all. Download the report today to learn more. Hi everyone, I'm very excited to be taking you through some of the key stats from our 2023 State of the Industry Report. What a year it's been for Mobile Money. First of all, it is reaching more people than ever. 
While it took the industry a decade and a half to reach 800 million registered customers, in the past five years, this number more than doubled. And there are now 1.6 billion registered mobile money accounts. 184 million new users were added in 2022 alone, a growth rate of 13% year on year. Part of this growth can be attributed to regulatory changes in Africa, particularly in Nigeria and in Ethiopia, where mobile money adoption rose rapidly last year. In fact, nearly two thirds of registered account growth in 2022 originated in the region. Sub-Saharan Africa is now home to 763 million registered accounts, almost half of the global total, with over 217 million accounts being used on a monthly basis. Of all regions, registered accounts grew the fastest year-on-year -year in the Middle East and North Africa at a rate of 39% year-on-year. If we look towards Asia-Pacific, South Asia accounted for 20% of all new accounts globally in 2022 and was the only region that grew faster in 2022 than in 2021. East Asia and the Pacific is now home to over 1 in 5 registered accounts compared to just 1 in 10 back in 2018. Finally, Latin America and the Caribbean had the second fastest year-on-year -year growth of any region in registered accounts at 13%. We know that to realize their potential, both commercially and in terms of financial inclusion, mobile money accounts must be used actively. While well, activity rates have continued to grow in 2022, the number of mobile money accounts that are active on a monthly basis rose at an annual rate of 13%. Similarly to registered accounts, this is lower than the growth rates that we saw in 2020 and 2021, but higher than the pre-pandemic rate in 2019. As of the end of 2022, there were just over 400 million accounts active on a monthly basis globally. While it had taken the industry around 17 years to reach 200 million active accounts, the next 200 million took only four years to materialize. Did transaction value also rise during the period? Absolutely. After crossing the $1 trillion mark in 2021, mobile money account transaction value set a new record in 2022. It grew by 22% to approximately $1.26 trillion. This means that $3.5 billion were transacted daily via mobile money last year. Back in 2020, this number stood at just over $2 billion daily, and we had predicted then that around $3 billion would be transacted on a daily basis by 2022. And obviously, we're delighted to see that our prediction to prove to be too conservative. Among the different transaction types, the share of cash-based transactions continued to decline with cash-in and cash-out transactions dropping by nearly two percentage points. This trend can be attributed to a significant rise in digital transactions, particularly bank interoperable transfers and bill payments. Now, what does it all mean for revenue? Mobile money providers continue to rely heavily on customer fees as opposed to business and government fees. Customer fees contributed around 79% of reported revenue as of mid-2022. And this is more than it used to be. Pre-pandemic, in 2019, business and government fees made up 33% of mobile money revenue. This number is now down to 21%. At a product level, Customer fees remain driven by cash-out and domestic peer-to-peer -peer transfer fees, which account for just over half of all provider revenue. As mobile money ecosystems diversify, mobile money revenue can grow through an increase in ecosystem transactions. And additional income streams are emerging, particularly fees from bill and merchant payments, international remittances, and digital credit. Now, I appreciate this is a lot of data to process, so let me stop here and encourage you all to read through the full report, which you can find at gsme.com slash SOTIA. Of course, I would like to thank all of the organizations who shared their data with us, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for their funding and support, and the team for putting together such a great piece. I hope you'll enjoy reading it as much as I did. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to congratulate GSMA for issuance of their 2023 state of the mobile money report. It's incredibly heartening to see 
the progress we have made world over and also in Pakistan in the number of use cases, number of transactions, overall volume. It is also heartening to see that uh, we're not just going incrementally, but also exponentially in terms of innovation, uh, integrating uh, our products and our services with other ecosystem players. Similarly, Jazz Cash in Pakistan has been making incredible progress with regards to its penetration and providing financial well-being services to its customers. We now have more than 42 million registered customers. Over the last one year, we have added new services like micro-lending, insurance, and increasing our footprint with government to public and public to government payments. Pakistan boasts of uh, a very high number of freelancers. These are individuals who sell their services across the world and Jazz Cash as a medium of transmitting of these funds to Pakistan has become even more popular. It is again very heartening to see the impressive growth over here when it comes to serving the needs and the concerns of freelancer community here in Pakistan. One of the things that I'm really passionate about is how we are helping improve the lives and livelihoods of women, especially in Pakistan. Financial empowerment is an objective for all of us, more so for women and more so for women here in Pakistan. And I'm glad to say that we have more than 25% of our customers who are women, and we have a stated ambition of make, taking it to 50% over the next three years. Hello, my name is Angelica Pesha I'm from Tigo Pesa, part of the Axian Telecom Group. I'm excited to be here to talk about the launch of the SOTIL, a state of the industry report for 2023. And I would like to touch on two main aspects as far as the report is concerned. The first aspect is regulation and also consumer protection and safety of consumer funds. Um, as far as regulation is concerned, regulation is considered as an enabler and also still a challenge in so many other um, different uh, markets. And in terms of uh, enabling, over one third um, of the participants have highlighted regulation as an enabler in order to improve mobile money. But still, we still have a quite a number of challenges, uh, main ones being um, as far as access is concerned, regulation on KYC and also taxation and also foreign exchange rates. So to talk about um, access, you are required to have an ID before you can access financial services. But we still have over 52 countries where national IDs are not as widespread, but is a requirement for customers to access financial services by having an ID. So this is part of the hindrances that we still need to work towards to improve um, accessibility to financial services. Another um, aspect that is coming through as, as a challenge in the last year is taxation. So different governments are taxing mobile money even higher than other aspects of the businesses. And we've seen this in different um, markets. And this increases the cost of transactions for our customers and also the cost of um, providing services to the players. So what is the best way to tax uh, in a way that supports mobile money? This is a question that we still need to answer. And the third one is foreign exchange um, protocols. As far as... Uh, movement of uh, money is concerned. Mobile money is the best way to send money across different countries because it's secure, it's safe, and it is instant. You send the money straight into the wallet instantly. But we still have a lot of um, challenges as far as financial uh, foreign exchange protocols are concerned. How do we improve that to make sure players are able to send money and customers can easily get money across the globe? So this is an aspect that is still challenging as far as regulation is concerned. We can only improve. We've seen a lot of improvement, but there's more that is desired for us to improve as far as mobile money is concerned. The other aspect um, that is challenging is um, when you look at consumer protection and safety. So we have uh, two main aspects that I would like to highlight. One is financial health. We've had financial inclusion improve very much. If I'll give an example for Kenya, we have over 82% of the population that is financially included. But if you go into the financial health of these customers, the number drops 24%. So it is still a very uh, important aspect for us to improve, for everybody to be financially healthy. And how do we get this done? There's a lot of issues that can still be done in terms of training uh, to, to uh, customers for them to understand how best to use the services. So these are aspects that needs to continue so that you can improve the financial health. The other aspect that the report is touching is as far as consumer protection and safety on the fraud aspect. We have quite a number of uh, frauds that are coming up as we improve and add different products and services on mobile money. Also, 
uh, we have challenges that come through. But to highlight, we have frauds that are social engineering, we have frauds that are related to identity, uh, KYC, and we also have frauds that are uh, related to, um, I would say, scams as far as apps are concerned. We are moving from the USSD to apps as the, as development come in, but it's a bit of a challenge in terms of it's easily to defraud on the app than it was on the uh, on the USSD. So what can we do? A lot of work needs to be done by the customers themselves, but also the players. One of the key aspects is um, to go through the mobile money certification because this is one of the best way to assess uh, the capability of the player to make sure they are able. Um, to take care of some of these challenges. So if you're going through the certification, you have over 300 criteria that you need to meet. Among them is AML and CFT. And as you're doing AML and CFT, you're looking at your different processes, you're looking at your different aspects. So this can help organizations improve their risk management protocols in order to serve customers better. Um, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Mary Ellen Iskandarian, President and CEO of Women's World Banking. Many more women than ever before own a mobile money account and use it at a similar rate to men on a monthly basis. But in spite of the overall growth in mobile money account ownership across low and middle income countries, the gender gap remains substantial. In fact, women in low and middle income countries are 28% less likely than men to own a mobile money account. And in countries like India, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Pakistan, some of the most populous countries in the world, this gap has shown signs of widening even further over the last year. A key reason behind this gap is the disparity in mobile phone ownership between men and women. Women are 7% less likely than men to own a mobile phone, and the gender gap in smartphone ownership is more than twice that. Getting technology into women's hands and tackling the persistent gender gap in mobile ownership is essential to increasing women's mobile money adoption. And then once women own the technology, we must take care that they have the digital skills to use digital financial services with ease and confidence and reap the full benefits of mobile money. Both policymakers and industry have a role to play in narrowing the mobile money gender gap. Policymakers must ensure that enabling policies and regulations are put in place. And at the top of that list is universal access to digital ID. Throughout Sub-Saharan Africa, for example, the number one reason both men and women seek out digital identification is to own a phone. The promise of mobile phone ownership can be an important catalyst to closing the mobile money gender gap and expanding financial inclusion. For their part, mobile money providers must ensure that their products and services are designed with women's needs and pain points in mind. Mobile money can be a major force in furthering financial inclusion, but only if women are served with parity with men as valued and valuable customers. Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to take part of the launch of the State of the Industry Report of GSMA of Mobile Money from GSMA for this year, 2023. And uh, I would like to start by to salute really the great work that GSMA is doing in this area, as this report is very important for uh, mobile money operators because it allows us to really get more benchmarking about what is happening in mobile money around the world to give to us really insight on uh, what is happening and also to allow us to share with others what we are doing. Mobile money has done well in the last few years as it really contributed to uh, really drive financial inclusion by allowing more than 1 billion people who were financially excluded to have an account and to uh, play a part in uh, the financial game and to be able to get access to, to an account and to be able to transact. And uh, mobile money operators have really also contributed on improving people's life across the world. And a uh, few examples. 
sending money has become commodity. Anyone today in Africa or where mobile money is available is able to send money to his family and also paying bills, water, electricity has been largely digitalized. And also electricity has become available in many remote areas in the world where it, not, it was not before because of uh, the combination of uh, mobile money and solar energy. And really that has contributed a lot on improving people's life. But I do believe that with all the success that we have been having uh, in mobile money, we still have a long way to go. And there are many areas that as mobile money uh, players, we need to work on. And mainly I think that we need to contribute more on uh, really accelerating the development of the African continent. And to do that, few areas that we need to focus on. Uh, the first one is credit. Credit is underpenetrated in Africa, uh, less than 10% penetration. And we do believe that it, it can enable really people to get access to funds, to create their own businesses, and to be able to really uh, uh, get access to uh, create their company. And with the credit, they will be able really to, to, to drive their own businesses. And uh, let me give you an example. Last time I traveled to Rwanda, I met with a lady in a market where I was doing trade visit. Every morning she would take a loan and buy tomatoes in bulk, sell the tomatoes in the market. And at the end of the day, she would pay back the loan, uh, take profit. And with the profit, she would buy food for her family. And also she would put some apart that she will use to pay the school fees for their kids. And she was able to really take care of, the, of her family uh, by starting a business with uh, a mobile money loan product. And uh, th that was really very important to, to testify, to get, to get that testimony from someone. And we encouraged her to start saving. And uh, after a few months, she became also uh, with the saving independent and using her own saving as a working capital. So that is bringing me to the, to the second uh, area I think uh, we need to develop further, which is saving. Saving is very important because it helps people to become really uh, financially independent. And by becoming financially independent, you get back your dignity and you don't need anyone uh, to really take care of your family. And that is very important. And today, uh, you, you see that 15% of customers, mobile money customers are saving and we can do it. We can really bring further the 15% to much higher number and that will uh, bring more and more people in Africa who will become financially independent. And the third one uh, really is uh, insurance. So insurance is very underpenetrated in the continent. And we think that by partnering with established insurance companies, we can really develop micro insurance and make it more available, more accessible to people. And that will contribute also largely to more development for African, uh, uh, African people. And the last one I would like to uh, talk about is international remittance. As you know, sending money to Africa or between African countries is really very, very expensive. And with the assets that we have as mobile money operators, we can really uh, make it much cheaper and then allowing more people to be able to send back money to their families. And also we can make it more accessible for people to be able to get access to remittances that are being sent by their families abroad. And uh, really, uh, and as MTN, we are contributing on, uh, we are playing our part really on uh, really uh, providing financial inclusion and also making sure that world-class financial services are accessible to any African in the continent and outside of the continent. And uh, we, we have, we made a lot of progress. Uh, we've announced our results. We have more than today, uh, 69 million customers were using our uh, mobile money offers in a monthly basis. Uh, we have uh, payment, more than 1 million merchants who are getting uh, paid via mobile money. We also do 
uh, have uh, lending across our footprint, developing credit, and uh, we disbursed more than 1.4 million uh, loan value last year to our customers. International remittance also is very important. We did transact more than 2.4 billion uh, of value, uh, international remittance value transaction last year. And also, uh, insurance is something we are focusing on. We've created with Sanlam a JV called IO uh, that is also being rolled out and we have more than 4 million policies. But as I said, we think that we can further develop all those IRAs and we are very busy on that and what would like, and we are working to get really to realize our ambition 2025 to get more than 100 million uh, customers using our fintech platform uh, by end of 2025 and we're really working on providing more financial inclusion in the continent and also to make uh, really more people to get access to fund to develop their own companies uh, to develop their own businesses to be able to be financially independent. Thank you very much to everyone and looking forward to the reports. Thank you to all our incredible speakers. Amir, Angelica, Max, Mary Ellen, Serinje, for sharing your insights with us today. From the discussions, we can see that mobile money is really driving financial inclusion around the world. And as it continues to grow, it offers an incredible opportunity to reach the 1.1 billion people who still do not have access to financial services. As an industry, we are committed to working together with our partners to closing this gap and designing safe, secure and convenient financial services that are accessible to everyone. If you think about the numbers we mentioned today, it is absolutely doable. 17 years to reach the first 800 million customers and only five years to reach the next 800 million. If we keep going at this trajectory, I have no doubt that we can achieve our goal of achieving financial inclusion for all. So thank you so much for joining us today. And to download the report and find out more, please visit our dedicated Sotir webpage. Thank you again and bye-bye.